The Zlati Kun cave woman represents one of the most ancient Homo sapiens remains discovered in Europe. Her skeletal remains were unearthed in the Zlati Kun cave, which is translated as Golden Horse, in the Czech Republic. This makes her a significant figure in the study of human evolution and migration. According to genetic dating, she is the oldest anatomically modern human ever to be genetically sequenced. Additionally, the majority of her Neanderthal DNA is in extremely long stretches, which demonstrates that her people had Neanderthal ancestors only a few generations prior. The Zlati Kun cavewoman lived during the Upper Paleolithic period, at a time when Europe was undergoing significant environmental and social changes. This was the era of the last Ice Age, the late Pleistocene, and her world would have been characterized by fluctuating temperatures, vast stretches of tundra, and scattered patches of forest. Her people, small bands of hunter-gatherers, moved through the landscape in search of food. They hunted large animals like reindeer, bison, mammoths, and aurochs, and gathered wild plants, fruits, and tubers. The cave itself may have served as temporary shelter for her people or a sacred burial place. While much of her real life is lost to time, but here is what we know of her world. Thousands of years ago, in a world far removed from ours, the lands of Central Europe were teeming with life. Massive glaciers sat upon the northern horizon, keeping the climate cool, but the valleys and plains still thrived. It was here, in the shadow of great forests and along the banks of winding rivers, that she was born into a small nomadic tribe of hunter-gatherers. Their tribe was part of a larger network of modern human families spread across the region setting up camp near rivers where fish were plentiful. The Zalati Kun cavewoman was part of the early Homo sapiens who coexisted and interacted with the last remnants of Neanderthals in Europe. Early Homo sapiens and Neanderthals interbred, as evidenced by genetic findings in her DNA. The cavewoman's community was part of the first wave of fully modern humans to occupy Europe, as Neanderthals were in decline at the time. Her genome has helped scientists understand early human migration and interactions. As one of Europe's first known modern humans, her life and genetic legacy shed light on how our species adapted to new environments and survived in the harsh landscapes of Ice Age Europe. Genetic analysis suggests that she belonged to an early Homo sapiens population that migrated into Europe most likely via the Middle East and the Danube River into Central Europe. However, much about this woman remains a mystery, and genetic data from Zlati Kun does not tell us much about her facial characteristics. She had a strong jawline, and her jaw has a higher structural affinity with Neanderthals than with modern humans, which may explain this factor. Research also discovered that the woman's endocranial volume was larger than that of modern European women. Her genome represents a deeply dividing lineage prior to the subsequent split between East and West Eurasians. Surprisingly, her DNA shows no evidence of subsequent genetic mixing with other Homo sapiens populations that followed her. This implies that her population either became extinct or was replaced by subsequent waves of humans, such as the Gravetians or Aurignacians, who settled in Europe after her time. This lack of genetic continuity makes her especially interesting. It hints at a deep early migration into Europe, one of the first, and implies that the group she belonged to may have been isolated, with little to no genetic contribution to subsequent populations. The Zlati Kun cave contains layers of human history, and it's unclear if the cavewoman was intentionally buried there or if her remains were left there by other means. Some researchers believe the cave was a sacred site used for rituals, with evidence of other early human activity in its depths. Her bones were relatively well preserved, indicating that the conditions inside the cave helped protect them from the elements and scavengers. The lack of significant artifacts or grave goods around her skeleton makes it difficult to determine whether she was buried with ceremonial rites but her placement in the cave suggests that her people saw it as a significant location. Indeed, the Zlati Kun cavewoman provides a critical snapshot of human history, offering a glimpse into the first modern humans who entered Europe. Her genome has helped researchers understand how Homo sapiens spread around the world and interacted with other hominin species, including Neanderthals. 
The groundbreaking study revealed that her DNA has more Neanderthal ancestry than almost any other known modern human, with some segments of her genome containing more than 3 to 4 percent Neanderthal DNA. This suggests that her ancestors interbred with Neanderthals shortly before her birth, possibly within a few generations. In fact, her group's closer genetic proximity to Neanderthals than to later Homo sapiens suggests that they arrived in Europe relatively recently following contact with Neanderthal populations. Her people would have been closer in appearance to Neanderthals than to modern Europeans. Her remains call into question the notion of a single, continuous migration into Europe. Instead, her genome paints a more nuanced picture of early human migrations, in which some groups, such as hers, arrived early but did not survive or integrate into the larger gene pool that defines modern Europeans. Whatever the case, early Eurasian populations may have interbred with Neanderthals between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago, during their initial expansion in the Middle East. Early Eurasian genomes contain 2 to 9 percent Neanderthal ancestry. These early modern humans lived alongside Neanderthals in Europe for approximately 5,000 years. Further DNA analysis revealed that her genome contained approximately 3% Neanderthal ancestry and that she belonged to an early modern human population that most likely mated with Neanderthals. As stated, this DNA was in long unbroken stretches, implying that the interbreeding was fairly recent in her family tree. Though her name and face were forgotten by time, the discovery of her remains thousands of years later gave us a glimpse into the world she inhabited, the skills she possessed, and the resilience she embodied. The Zlati Kun woman remains a symbol of human endurance, wisdom, and connection to the land. Her story is a testament to the lives of those who came before us, shaping our world in ways we are only beginning to understand. Her discovery continues to shape our understanding of early human history, providing a tantalizing glimpse of modern humans' first steps into the heart of Europe, their interactions with Neanderthals, and the profound ways in which their environment shaped the genetic legacy we carry today. It was long thought that modern humans first arrived in Europe around 42,000 years ago, but newly analyzed Stone Age tools have challenged this theory. According to another new study, modern humans entered Europe in three waves between 54,000 and 42,000 years ago. For years, the oldest confirmed signs of modern humans in Europe were 42,000-year-old teeth discovered by archaeologists in Italy and Bulgaria. These ancient groups were most likely proto-Aurignations, the ancestors of the Aurignations, Europe's first known hunter-gatherer culture. Now, a tooth discovered in Grotte Mandrine in southern France's Rhone Valley, however, suggests that modern humans lived there around 54,000 years ago, according to a recent study. This suggests that modern humans lived in Europe approximately 10,000 years earlier than the Zlatikun woman. In the study, scientists linked this fossil tooth to stone artifacts known as Neronian, after the nearby Grotte de Neron site. Neronian tools include tiny flint arrowheads or spear points that are unlike anything found in Europe at the time. In the new study, an archaeologist proposes that another wave of modern humans may have entered Europe between the 42,000-year-old Proto-Aurignations and the 54,000-year-old Neronians. This study is a detailed rewrite of the historical structure of Homo sapiens' arrival on the continent. Researchers concentrated on an industry of stone artifacts previously discovered in the Levant, in the eastern Mediterranean region. Scientists have long believed that the Levant was an important gateway for modern humans migrating out of Africa. When they compared Neronian tools from Grotta Mandrin to the industry from around the same time at the Levant, they discovered significant similarities. This suggested that both groups were the same, with the Levantine group gradually expanding into Europe. The much younger Proto-Aurignacian artifacts have very similar counterparts in the Levant from a culture called the Amerian. This culture served as a link between Europe and the eastern Mediterranean populations during Homo sapiens' early migrations across the continent. In addition, research discovered thousands of modern human flint artifacts from the Levant, dating back to the early Upper Paleolithic. This prompted investigators to look for potential modern human counterparts to these artifacts in Europe. 
they found that stone artifacts from the so-called Chateau-Peronian European industry are strikingly similar to modern human artifacts discovered in the Levant's early Upper Paleolithic period. Furthermore, Chateau-Peronian artifacts date back approximately 45,000 years, placing them between the Neronians of the Levant and the proto aurignacians Scientists had previously assumed Chateau-Peronians were Neanderthals. However, these researchers now believe the Chateau-Peronians were a second wave of modern humans into Europe. This new model for modern human settlement in Europe is ambitious and provocative. For a long time, evidence has accumulated that there were several early dispersals of Homo sapiens into Europe prior to the well-documented Aurignacian-associated migration around 42,000 years ago. Modern humans first appeared in Europe at least 45,000 years ago, but the extent of their interactions with Neanderthals, who vanished around 40,000 years ago, and their relationship to the broader expansion of modern humans, unclear. The international team of researchers sequenced the genomes of Europe's oldest securely dated modern humans, who lived around 45,000 years ago in Bacio Kiro Cave, Bulgaria. By comparing their genomes to those of people who lived later in Europe and Asia, the researchers demonstrated that this early human group in Europe contributed genes to later people, particularly modern East Asians. Furthermore, researchers discover that all three individuals had Neanderthal ancestors a few generations back in their family tree, confirming that the first European modern humans mixed with Neanderthals and implying that such mixing was widespread. Indeed, the researchers also discovered large stretches of Neanderthal DNA in the genomes of the Bacho Kiro cave people, indicating that they had Neanderthal ancestors only about five to seven generations ago. This implies that mixing with Neanderthals was the norm, rather than the exception when the first modern humans arrived in Europe. The oldest individuals discovered in the cave were directly radiocarbon dated to between 43,000 and 46,000 years ago. The earliest inhabitants of Bacho Kiro Cave lived when Neanderthals were still present. The researchers scanned their genomes for fragments of Neanderthal DNA. Researchers discovered that the Bacho Kiro Cave individuals had more Neanderthal ancestry than nearly all other early modern humans, with the exception of a 40,000-year-old individual from Romania. In this case as well, the majority of this Neanderthal DNA is in extremely long stretches. This demonstrates that these people had Neanderthal ancestors only five to seven generations ago in their family trees. Although only a few genomes from modern humans who lived in Eurasia around the same time as some of the last Neanderthals have been discovered, nearly all of them have recent Neanderthal ancestors. The findings suggest that the first modern humans to arrive in Eurasia had frequent contact with Neanderthals. Some of them may have even been assimilated into local Neanderthal populations. Only later did larger modern human groups arrive and supplant the Neanderthals after a major volcanic eruption just after 40,000 years ago. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share, and check out our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.